evening to everyone here and welcome to Father Conversations. I am your host, Alina Chung, and I hope everyone's having an awesome Sunday morning this first Sunday in December. Can you believe it? 2021. We're almost at the end of 2021, if you can believe that. Time is going by so fast, but if you're enjoying it, hey, let it keep on going because if, with everything we've gone through in the past uh, couple of years, it is an amazing thing to be alive, to be able to experience the joy of the Lord in the season, to be, ex- be able to experience just living. I mean, no matter what you, you go through, just the fact that you're alive to face it and overcome it is something to be thankful about because some people cannot overcome obstacles that come their way. They just let things happen to them. But life is about enjoying things, overcoming things and learning from it and becoming better from it and having a better, more enjoyable life. I thank God for you here today. I thank God for everything that's going on today. Even we're decorating, we're going to the stores, you're seeing all the activities taking place and it is just the best time of the year. It's my favorite time of the year. I hope it's yours. So I just want to thank God for you being here today on this Sunday afternoon. Okay, our topic from, for today is empowered family. Empowered family. And don't forget, don't forget the plug. Every uh, every time we begin this program, you see the, the trailer for the Empowered Value Forum course. And that's what we're, 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 we've put out to help people live the empowered life that God has called you to live, that you can be everything God has called you to be. Nothing happens to you, it happens for you. The Bible says, all things work together for the good to them who love God and for those who are called according to his purpose. So whatever you're going to, hopefully it's good, but if it's bad, use it as a, uh, see it as a, um, as an opportunity for God to teach you something, for you to get stronger, for you to overcome it, for you to help someone later on to when they want to find out how can they overcome that obstacle. You could be now a witness to them and tell them how God helped you through it and how they can get through it. So everything that happens to you in life, and I, there's one quote I love is you don't ever lose in life. You either win or you learn. If you're not winning, you're learning something that can make you stronger so you can win later on, so you can help somebody win. So see life as a platform that God has given you as an opportunity to overcome things, to learn, to get stronger, and to be the better for it because all things work for your good. The good, the bad, the ugly, it works for your good, the Bible says. And believe me, it does because God is in control and God has your back. And if you trust in him, he can take the places you've never been before. Okay. So that was just our plug. Go in favor of a great God.com. See the course, purchase it. If somebody else needs it, help them purchase it. Um, uh, remember, be your be your business is coming out. It, you can pre-order it, but it's coming out soon. Once we have it done, then you'll be able to go in there and join that course as well. Empowered family. And this is the time for families. Thanksgiving just went by. Um, Everybody's enjoying their families. I mean, I love the time that we could just gather and you get to talk to people that probably you haven't seen all year long. Probably you, you, you just haven't seen them in years, but families come together. And it's important for us to understand that families are empowered. And our scripture that we're going to look at is Genesis 128, where God says, and God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. God didn't just put man and woman together and say, you just go together and do whatever you want. No, he had a plan even for that. That's why I tell people the family is God's idea. So you can't change that the person who created or invented something has the the blueprint, has the idea, has the purpose for why they created it. And you can't change it because you feel like it, because you're not the one who created it. God created the family, a man and a woman. And his purpose for it was so so they could be fruitful and multiply after their kind. That whatever God placed in the man, whatever God placed in the woman, they were supposed to come together, bring it together and produce children after their kind so they would replenish the earth with what God wanted the earth to be replenished with. He placed it in them. That's why he created man in his image and in his likeness because he wanted a particular uh, 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 characteristic, a particular, um, uh, 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 I don't know how you call that, environment and he thought if whatever he placed in these two individuals when they procreated that would procreate throughout the earth 
to create an environment that God wanted in the earth, an environment of dominion, an environment of, 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 of building up things and managing things and doing things the way God wanted it done. That's why he created man. And that was the first family. So usually when you're trying to figure out what is the purpose for something, how can I do something better? What does God want from my family? And lots of, lots of them people don't really know. Look at what he created. Look at what happened with Adam and Eve and you'll know what he wanted. Now, of course they messed up and we know they messed up. And that's why Jesus had to come to redeem us back to himself, to make things the way it was supposed to be. But if you look at the original uh, plan of God and what he wanted, you'll see what God wanted. He wanted a man and a woman to come together and procreate the earth and to build a strong family. So the family's empowered to, to, to multiplying the earth, to subdue things and to do things in a powerful way that will lift up God in the earth. They're supposed to everywhere the soul. That's why the Bible says everywhere the soles of your feet tread, I have given to you. God gave the land, the whole earth to man to manage and own. That is thousands and thousands, probably millions and millions of acres of land. God put man, two people on the earth to manage. And he even gave them the, the opportunity to name the animals they would be managing. So God wanted man to take care of a lot. He put in him the potential to manage the entire earth and do it well. Until, of course, man sinned. But God placed that in us. So when you as a family come together, you have to, it's important that we understand what did God place us here for? That's why I tell everyone, like, even when you're getting married, and that's something I had to do when I got married. And even before that, I was learning all this in church so that when I got married, I could, I could have that in my mind as to what to do. What does God want for your family? Your family is empowered to do great things in the earth. And I, I just thought it would be a powerful thing to talk about this time of the year when it's really celebrating and families come together and people come together. And, and sometimes you have tension in families. We know that. You have the happy times in families. You always have the one that's bickering. You always have different things. Every family has their own uh, drama and dilemma. But, it's, but it behooves us to overcome all the dilemmas so that we could be who God has called us to be. But the family is supposed to be the platform where children are raised, where children are groomed, where children are trained to be what God wants them to be. So a lot of times you see kids and we're like, well, people actually expect the teachers in the schools to, to train their kids. And yeah, there's some training that has to happen with the teachers, but the main training has to happen at home. Before you send your child out, you're supposed to put in your child everything you want your child to be before they get out there and mix with all the other stuff that's going on out there because you don't know what's out there. And believe me, when you learn what's out there, I mean, I just watch a couple, just listening to the news and hearing the drama and things people are doing, you're like, my, my God, what is going on in our world? And that's why you have to train them so they can handle what's going on in the world and not some children, they leave home and they are not equipped. They fall apart. They get depressed. They kill themselves. They break, they have mental breakdowns. These are things that shouldn't happen if we are doing what God said in the family, if we are operating as the empowered families that God has called us to be. And believe me, it's not easy. That's why it's important that we stay connected to God to find out who each person is. The parents come together and they train the children. God, when God gives a, a family, a child, parents, a child, he's actually making you a steward of his uh, 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 purpose, of his design, of, his, uh, of the opportunity that that child is to do what God has called that child to do. You don't know what God has called that child to do. You don't know what kind of child you have. You don't know the potential in your child. That's why I tell people, I don't understand how people do things without God. Because staying with God, he, he reveals things to you that you're not even aware of. He reveals things to you that your child is not even aware of. But he's made you a steward of that child so you could bring that child up in the way that child should go to be everything that God has called that child to be. And that's what Mary and Joseph were to Jesus, if you look at that. Jesus was a little boy and they were raising him up, but Mary knew what kind of child she had and God showed that to her. Joseph probably knew a little bit, but not as much as Mary because the miracle happened in Mary. A baby was conceived in her and she didn't even know a man. That, if, if that happens to you as a woman, that is enough to just make you just, just be beside yourself in giving glory to God and being protective of that gift that God gave you. And they grew that child up. And even if she was careful and she was 
taking care of Jesus and she was training him, Jesus still had to tell when she was, when he was 12 years old teaching in the temple and he left them and they couldn't find him. And she finally called up to him and said, Jesus, what are you doing? We've been looking for. He said, don't you know I'm about my father's business? That is what I was created for. He had to, he had to uh, remind her of why he was created. And, and then for, for a moment, I guess she forgot. And then she realized, oh my God, that is what God has created this child to be and to do. And she had to leave it alone. So it's important for us to understand when, when, when you're raising children, it's not just to say, oh, the child is beautiful and wonderful. And, and that's a wonderful thing. That, but you have to say, God, what is your purpose for that child? I have a child in me that you told me to, to, to procreate and to multiply and to replenish the earth with what you've placed in me. So God, show me how I can train this child to be everything you want it to be, everything you want him to be in the earth. You have to have that mindset because that's the empowered mindset. And a lot of times when you see people acting beneath their value, people acting beneath the value that God has given them, if you have, because I do counseling sessions and all that, if you talk to them for five seconds, you realize where it came from. It was something that happened from the very home they came out of. Sometimes it's something the parents uh, knowingly did, but sometimes it's something the parents didn't know they were doing because the parents themselves were, were, had some baggage from when they were kids in their homes that they have never dealt with. So that comes out in their behavior. That comes out in how they train the child. And the child now has that handed down to them and they're acting that out. It's important for us to, for us to be the empowered family God has created us to be, that we find out, God, what do you want for my life? What do you want for this child's life? What do you want from this family? What are we supposed to, rip, to, to, to uh, procreate the earth with, to multiplying the earth? Because you multiply after your own kind. You create after your own kind. You develop after your own kind. Whoever, if you have some characteristic in you or something in you, it will show up in everything you do. That's why we need to get healed and whole. That's why God says, forgive your enemies. That's why God says to walk in love because anything that affects you in life, good, bad, or ugly, if you don't take care of the bad, it's going to show up in whatever you do. If you take care of the bad, don't have to take care of the good. The good is good. If you have good, that's going to show up in how you deal with people, how you speak, what you create, how you create. All that's in you affects everything you do. That's why it's good to stay under the mighty hand of God and allow him to do everything in us he needs to do, all the work he needs to do so that we now can multiply after our own kind. And that kind hopefully is a good kind because if it's not, what the, the things you see in the world, the terrorism, the, 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 the depravity, the, the murders, the, the thefts and all these different things you see, that's what comes out of it. You're multiplying after your own kind. So we have to say, Lord, we want our families from the ground up to be strong, to be built on the solid rock of your word so that whatever we create comes out solid and good and can affect the world in a positive way, can build up lives, can build up and be productive in our communities. We need to have communities that are productive, where young people are doing great things and they have the great, uh, a great mindset. They, 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 they have a great uh, outlook on themselves. They have good self-esteem. They have confidence. They, they're, they're walking in what God has called them to boldly and unashamedly. But if you don't start from the family and you don't start from where the child is trained, then you're going to have a whole mess on your hands. And we know what a mess is because our world today is a literal mess because so many times we try to stir away from God, stir away from what he said, his commandments and create our own, our own type of policies and, and principles that are away from God, that stray away from what God has called us to. And the product is a mess. I, I mean, I hear some things on the TV and I'm just, on the news, on the TV, on the radio, whatever. And I'm like, well, how did you come up with that? Like, how do you come up from... from <laughs> And the things you're saying, and the thing is, they actually make it sound like it's intellectual, and it's the 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 the, the, the very most in, uh, uh, the, the, the most brilliant idea ever. And you're listening to it, and you're like, "But this is confusing. What is this?" And then they train the children with it, and the children come out. That's why I tell people, train your kids at home. 
Don't wait for the schools to train your kids because you don't know who is training what. In this. So if you have messed up teachers in schools and they're teaching your kids, then your kids are going to be messed up unless you have given them enough foundation for them to be resilient against anything that's not good. But if they're not resilient, they can be so susceptible to think to people like the ISIS, like all these Al Qaeda, all these different groups that are just preying on young kids who have low self esteem, who don't understand their value, who are looking to be to, to for identity and to belong to a group and to belong to people because they never they never belong. They may be outcast. They may be a little uh, rebellious, and so people don't necessarily like them. So. They're looking to belong and any group that takes them in and makes them feel like they're part of the family, that's where they join. And that's what I'm talking about. If you don't build the right family base for your children, they're going to look for some other family to belong to. And usually it's not a good family. People have the need to belong. God created us with that. Because that need can only be filled, first of all, with God and what he puts in us. So if we don't have God, first of all, and then we don't have a good family base, then we're looking to belong somewhere. So the gangs can pick us up. So the, the ISIS groups can pick us up. So all the weird occults and, and, and the cultish groups can pick us up. And we just, oh, it just feels wonderful because I just feel like I'm, I'm at home, I belong. And they prey on that. And then they can get you to do all kinds of crazy stuff all over the place. And then you're like, how did I get here? the foundation wasn't right. So we have to build strong families and we have to allow families to understand you are empowered by God to be what God has called you to be. You are empowered by God to train your children right. Now it starts first of all with strong parents. You can't have strong children without strong parents because first of all, what the Bible says, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. Now, being fruitful is one thing to be fruitful and to have children. That's one way of being fruitful. But being fruitful also comes from what's coming out from within you. Be fruitful in your demeanor, in your character. Fruitful in love. Display love. Display peace. All these good things that God placed in us has to come out of us. Be creative. That, that everything that God has placed in you, let it come forth and multiply. And that's why when you do that, then it can show forth in your children. It can show forth in your, in your enterprise of the family, what you do, what you don't do, how productive are you in the earth, how effective your impact on the earth and the people around you. All that comes from you being fruitful. Everything God has put in you, you need to be abounding in it. The fruits of the spirit, the, all these different things, the gifts, the talents, the wisdom, the knowledge, you understand, all that needs is part of the fruitfulness too. Because when that comes out of you, it's going to affect everyone around you, including your children, including your family members, including your co-workers, including your friends. It's supposed to just impact everyone around you. And then you multiply after your kind. Strong parents. Strong parents need to say, God, make us whole. Before we get the trend, make us whole. Whatever is lacking in us, heal. That's why I tell people, I know a lot of people are very skeptical about therapy and, and counseling and stuff like that. And I always say, if you go to someone, go to a very, make sure it's a good person. Because a lot of people can take advantage of people when, when, they, when, they, when they deal with them in the mental capacity and their emotions. So make sure you're going to a sound or reputable therapist, psychologist, psychiatrist, whatever. But if you can't handle situations on your own, and I always believe believers should be able, the word is a mirror to reflect everything going on. And God has given us enough guidance to go in there, stay in his word, and get healed whenever we need to. But some people are not able to do that for whatever reason. They're not able to pray well or they're not even to hear from God, whatever is affecting the relationship with God or whatever. And it could be skewed. So if you can't get figure out how to stay in God's presence and get him to give you the help and stay until he heals you, then by all means, go to someone, talk to your pastor, talk to a counselor, talk to a therapist, talk to a family member, talk to a friend, whoever can help you get the healing you need you need to do that because I, oh, what would they say? Hurt people hurt people. And it's really true. They don't even, some people hurt people and they don't even know they're hurting people because they don't understand the behavior and how they're, or how it appears to other people. So that's why it's important for us to get hold. Things have happened to you in the past. Let them go. Forget how the Bible tells you, forgive. Let it go. You can't hold people, make people hold you hostage because you're angry at them. Let them go. 
So you can live the life God has called you to live. So you can be in a good relationship with God and he can heal you and he can minister to you and show you how to grow. That is important. You got to have parents that are strong. And parents can be into, you, you can't be like depending on, you can depend on, on each other in a way because you should be partners and teams in what you do in your, in your family. But you have to be whole individuals, fully dependent on God. Because that's the only place you can get satisfied. That's the only place, the only person that can meet your every need is God. And sometimes we depend on people to make us feel whole and complete. And in doing that, we deprive ourselves because nobody can do that. There's nobody that can make you feel whole and complete. There's nobody, no perfect person that can give you everything you need. That's why it's good to go to God. And when he fills you, then you're not, you don't depend on people to allow you to feel validation or to feel whole or to feel good about yourself. God is the one that does that for you. And once you get in his presence and he does that whole and that wholeness and that healing and that purging and everything you need, then you can feel free now to work at, to have a good relationship with your spouse, to work together, to build your families, to work together, to see what is God's purpose for you as a team. You are a team. Husband and wives are teams. Are te it's, it's a team. And it has to be teamwork. It has to be partnership, 100% off from each person. Because that's what it takes to make it. I just, I've just gotten into marriage not too long ago. And let me tell you something, it's, it's teamwork. And you have to have that mindset. Because like a person like me, I'm a very independent person. So I could, do, I, I just feel that's just how I've been. If I want to do something, me and God work together, we get it done. I may need a person here or there. And that's just how I am. I've never been the person that feels like I'm not that needy type of, I'm not, I've never been that. And my mom told me that I'm a kid and I never knew all that, but she just told me. And so I've never been that. I just know if I want to do something, I set my mind to it. God says I can do whatever I set my mind to do. I work with God and together we build what he's called us to build. But once I got married, I had to learn to be, I had to learn to divert a little bit and be now part of a team, teamwork. And so that takes a little compromise in both parts. But if you're holding yourself, compromising is not a big thing for you because it doesn't diminish you. It just lets you know, okay, I'm now just having to work with somebody and to team up with somebody. And I may have to back up a little bit to let them come in so we can both together achieve the goal. That's why it's important as a team that you figure out what are the goals for this family? What do we want to achieve? What does God want us to achieve? And you have to ask these questions because sometimes you can get caught up in life and all the busyness and all that stuff and you get lost in everything and you forget the goal. You forget the mission. You forget the purpose and you're doing things that are just not even, not even what you're set out to do and you can get distracted work strong parents working together to build what god has called you to build your family and the one person said and a lot of ministers are here it's like an enterprise you all are there to do something in the earth create the children the children come together work with the family they build whatever you want what kind of you want to build you want to build for god you want to build businesses you want to build a uh, 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 um, character you want to build whatever it is you want to build that's what now you're adding every every single child is now part of the team and everybody's working together to accomplish the goals but it starts with strong parents so once you are strong then part of your being strong is a strong marriage you have to build your marriage see a lot of people they spend time on the children and that, that, that's something I'm, I've seen a lot in just not just in counseling and churches and all these they build their lives around the kids. Once the kids are gone, they end up getting divorced because they don't have an identity outside of their children. Your children are there for basically probably 18 years, maybe a little longer. But once they're 18, even if they live at home, they're not kids anymore. So you can't necessarily tell them what to do. They're adults. Then they marry and go their way. They have their kids and they keep going. When they're gone, what do you do? And some people get lost because they have no identity when the kids are gone. Because everything they put, they just put in the kids. But the kids are not there to be kids forever. And they'll let you know in a minute, I'm not a kid, I'm grown. So you're here and you spend 18 years training your kids and you haven't focused on your marriage. You haven't built a strong marriage. You haven't built a strong relationship. The kids are gone and now you have two people in the house who are strangers. And that's why you end, some people end up getting divorced, which is a very sad thing to me because all these years together and you haven't built 
That's what you should be building. And that's why I tell people you have to think of, if you want to have strong kids, the best thing you can do is build a strong marriage and a strong family because your kids are looking to you to be the foundation. If they fall down, they don't want to know that you're falling down with them. They want to know like, oh my God, I can go to mom and daddy and they can give me the boost I need to keep on going in life. But they don't want to be going around all of a sudden look back and mommy and daddy has fallen. Because that is what we know as our strength. I mean, I'm talking about myself as a kid. I mean, I'm an adult, but I still look to my parents for a lot of guidance and, and counsel because I see them as strong uh, 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 examples in my life who've helped me become what I am today. And when I need advice, I go to them for it. But you have to be strong as family. You can't be like, I'm about the kids. The kids are gone. And then you I say, but wait a minute. You didn't spend the time you needed in the right way. That's why I tell people, if you want strong kids, build strong marriages, build yourself up because your kids are looking to you for the strength that they'll need. It's a security. It's, their, it's, it's everything you have until you go on your own. And even after you go on your own, you're like, well, at least then I can go back and, and, and ask them for something if things are going a little shaky. It's important to build strong homes and marriages and parents. Now, in building the strong home, you haven't gone to the kids yet, you have to have strong moral code. It's important to have strong moral code in your family. And I'm caught saying that coming from I just started building my family and coming from a family. Strong moral codes are important. You have to teach your kids boundaries. I see some kids. I, I mean, I'm just sitting down. I sit down and, and I see the little ones yelling at the parents in the, in the stores, in the mall. And some of them even dare to slap them. Now, that's where everything goes crazy for me. I'm sitting there going, are you serious? I want to smack the kid for the mother. I'm like, and they just say, oh, my God, why are you doing this? I said, no, 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 no. That's why God said, train a child. In psychology, you have the rewards and the punishment. You reward good behavior. You punish bad behavior. You have to train that. If you can train animals that way, you have to train children. Because if you don't, they'll think when they leave your home, they can go and do that out there. See, that's what training is about. Training is not about uh, uh, punishing the child per se or, or, or being mean or abusing the child. That's why I tell you, you have to watch how you train, what you do. It can be abusive, but it has to be firm. Because when they leave your home, if you don't train them right, they'll go out there to do stuff. And then that's how they end up in jail because they believe they can do what they did to you to out there. And people don't take that from nobody out there. That's what my dad always told us when he was training us. He said, I'm training you so that you don't have to come and the police have to come bringing you home to me. I'm training you so you have good behavior here so you don't go on the street and do stuff and then they put you in jail. Now, I may have a little mercy on you, but they won't have a mercy on you out there. So that's why you train your kids, not just for themselves, but for the outer world, the world they're going to face that's not necessarily a very nice world. And you also train your children for their families. I always tell people, you have, you have boys and you have girls. Train the boys to be the best husbands, the best fathers that they, they can be. And train the girls to be the best wives and mothers. Because if you don't train them right, and, and the training comes not from just telling them, but for, for being examples to them, showing them how they're supposed to act with their husbands. So if the, if the parents are, are treating each other well, the husband's respectful, the wife is respectful, they're showing love in the home, they're showing dedication and all that good stuff, then the kids have no choice but to, ex, to uh, rep, multiply that or, or replenish or show that forth in their behavior when they meet their families, because that's what I know in my family. Now, there are all these exceptions who grew up in good homes and, and just go buck wild. That's, that's a whole different situation. But for the most part, if you demonstrate that to them, they're going to do that. So some people, they want to take care of them, spoil their children. And then the children go out there and are spoiled brats in their marriages. And they have messed up marriages. You can't. That's why training is important. You're training them how to take care of their children. Think about you training them so your grandchildren could have a happy life. If that's something, because some, they say, some um, grandparents said, they're more lean to do their grandkids than their kids because they realize, you know, we can take you for a while and send you back to your parents, that kind of stuff. Well, just think if you have to do that, think of it like that when you're training your kids. I'm training you so you can make sure my grandbabies are, are, are well taken care of and are trained well. If anything, do that. But it's important. Moral codes, right and wrong, what they should and shouldn't do, how they should treat people. 
how they should love people. All these things come from the home. The home is the nesting ground where all these things take place. That's where they learn it. I think one medical uh, um, report says, kids have everything in them they need to, uh, to, to be who they, they're called to be, to be what they're gonna be by the age of five. And that includes the, the genes they have, that includes even, they said if you, that's why they were, they were saying you should feed them healthy foods because if you don't and you give them foods that can uh, lead to obesity by the, by the time they're five, that it kind of can help determine what kind of a, 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 a their, their weight and their size and everything by the time they grow up. So if you give them healthy foods till they're five, then they'll, they'll be healthy and not necessarily obese. But if you give them the, the other kind of foods, it could help generate obesity in them in their later years. That was amazing to me. And I said, oh my God, so by the age of five, everything they have, everything they need to be what they're gonna be is in them by the age of five. Their mindset, their body, their, their, their action, everything. I said, oh my God, five, who would think that? And so that's why there's some uh, health uh, professionals who don't give their children anything sweet when they're babies, because they said, if you don't, then they won't crave it when they're older because they, they've never had it. And I think that's so genius. Like if you train them to do the right things, you can help prevent a lot of problems later on. Now they may go and learn behaviors from their friends and all that good stuff, but what you've instilled in them can help propel them into the, in the right direction. And that, that's important. Train, that's why the Bible says, train up a child in the way you should go. What you want in that child, how they should treat people, how they shouldn't treat people, what they should say, what they shouldn't say, how respectful they should be, their mindset financially. That's another thing that um, they were showing how a lot of kids are not trained with financially. They go to school, they learn and everything and they get all their degrees. When they come into and to managing their lives and their finances, they have no clue. So they can make a lot of money and still not do well in life. And I was like, oh, wow. And it's not because you don't necessarily have to train them in the, you just have to train how to handle finances as a kid, practical stuff. And I thought that was so good because I'm like, and you don't think about it, but really and truly that's what's going on. And they were telling you how the mindset that, and they were, it was just a training how they were showing the mindset of people who become, who are wealthy, who are successful financially is because it was a, a, a mindset change. It wasn't necessarily even going to school because some of them, never went, some people uh, are wealthy, never went to college. Some of them are just have a high school education and yet they're wealthy because they start understanding what finances are really about, what money is about and how to handle it. And so they said, if you train children, they don't even have to be trained in, in, in anything, in, in any uh, higher education and they can be successful because they understand finances. They understand that they need to be owners more than the consumers and that kind of stuff training children and sometimes if your kids are too young to learn no they're not and i found that out because the behavior that comes out of them at a very young age you realize that oh, wait a minute now they're sharper than we thought they were they're not missing nothing they're if you don't give them the right thing they're gonna pick up on a lot of bad things really quick especially now that everybody's advanced with technology and the phones and the iphones and the, and the ipads and the laptop i mean they know more about these things than we do because their minds are like sponges. You put the right thing in, it will just take over their lives. You put the wrong thing in, take over their lives. Train your children in the way they should go. Next, we need to train the children with strong unity in the families. You need to have a united friend. The Bible says, in the, when, when unity is present, he said, there have I commanded the blessing. Unity, there have I commanded the blessing. It's almost like, he said, it's like the oil that goes down from the head and drips all the way down to the foot. That's kind of, that's the kind of anointing that comes when God sees unity. And in the Tower of, of Babel, the, 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 they were so united in doing evil that God, they wanted to get up to heaven. And God said, if I don't go down and confuse these people, they're going to come up and do what we don't want them to do. So he just came down and just brought confusion and put the different languages in there so they couldn't continue with their venture. Unity is important. 
Your family needs to be unified. The devil will come with every strategy to bring this unity, to bring a, a, a discord. And especially the parents, I, in, in, some, in most cases, you are the person, the persons that are most uh, better equipped to analyze situations, to understand what's going on and to steer the, 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 the direction of your family when it comes to unity. The families are being divided all over the place in all kinds of ways. That's extended families, that's immediate families. I mean, you just have to understand the devil will bring all kinds of stuff. I mean, I've, I've seen where families have gotten, one comes in with the bad behavior and messes up the whole family. And next thing you know, everybody's, one's divorced. This one is, everybody's divorced. It's just a line is just going down the line because the devil came with a seed. And if we're not operating in the spirit with a spirit of discernment, it can, we can, it can come in and spread and we don't even know it's there. So we can cast it out and bring it down in the name of Jesus. But the devil comes with different things to bring discord in your family. That's why there's one thing I said, um, the military has that uh, when, when you're doing your um, becoming a citizen, he said that you're supposed to fight against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And I use that same thing in the family. I fight against all enemies, foreign and domestic that comes against the family. It comes against my family. And you have to do that in the spirit realm. So the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and against the rulers of the darkness of this world. It's the spiritual forces. Sometimes we focus so much on people. It could take us away from what the real enemy is. The real enemy, the devil, you can't see him. See, that's what makes him a very formidable opponent. You can't see him, but he's working all over the place. That's why you have to stay in the spirit. So you can discern and say, okay, God, something is not right. And we need to, mm. and you, and you have to stay in this and pray continuously, pray over your children, walk through the room. There's nothing my mom taught us. And she does, she would walk through every room. We don't have to be there. Nobody has to know she's doing it, but walk through the room and plead the blood of Jesus and, and bind everything that comes against the knowledge of God. And you have to take care of that in your home. When family members are coming who are not necessarily immediate family, they come from other areas and they come in during the holidays, you have to do those kind of things in your home because some are saved, some are not saved. Even if they're saved, they could be going to things and you don't know. And the devil can use that to bring some discord. And all of a sudden, everybody's on edge and everybody's fighting and everybody's bickering. And I go, what just happened? And then you realize the devil has stepped in. So that's why you have to stay in the spirit. And sometimes uh, uh, being argumentative and, and, and fussing back and forth is not necessarily the way to go. Sometimes you have to stay in the spirit and God will just say, hush him out and pray. And he'll just work that thing out in his way. But you have to be in the spirit because the devil comes in all kinds of, I mean, I didn't even, lately it's just been, all, I mean, like I told everybody, COVID, oh Lord, all kinds of stuff happened with this COVID. And that's because a lot of people were stuck at home with each other. Now, when you go to work every day, you don't have, that's why a lot of, um, they said a lot of divorces happen when people retire because you haven't had to be in the home with them, with the husband and wife for so long because everybody's going to work and coming back. But when you're stuck in the house 24 seven, oh, the real starts showing up quick. But instead of fussing and letting it take over your home, that's when you have to start praying and binding the devil. And staying before God and saying, God, heal and, and deliver. And that's what should have been taking place. But again, not everybody's saved. But it happened to even saved people. And that's why I said, you have to be aware. You have to stay in the spirit. Lord, show me my family. Show me the family members. Another thing I always tell people, you have to talk to your kids. Talk to them. Ask them questions. Because that's another thing I'm seeing with everything that happened during this COVID is a lot of kids were killing themselves. They were depressed. I mean, uh, I, when I was a kid, I loved holidays. I loved vacations. I couldn't wait for summer vacation. And we had it longer than we had like about three weeks to a month, to a month, sometimes six weeks, I think we would have. And we loved it. But some kids were going crazy during this COVID because they had to be in the home and they're doing the Zoom thing. And I was like, well, what happened? We have to talk to people. People are going through things and they're not talking because everybody's on the phone and everybody's in the laptop and everybody's doing stuff. And, they're, they're, and that's why I thought it wouldn't be a problem, but it was a problem. Because now everybody's at home, you would think when they'd be happy on the laptop because everybody, everywhere you go, they're stuck in their phones, the laptop, everything, on the train, on the buses, in the cars. 
But being stuck at home in that situation, I guess they had no outlet. It's one thing when you get to leave the house and go places, another thing when you get to stay in the same place all the time. And if you're not enjoying the place, then you could have a problem. So that's when you have to realize and say, how are y'all doing? What is going on with you? What's going on at school? Talk to the teachers. Talk to each other. Husbands and wives, talk to each other. What's going on with your day? How did it feel? What happened? How do we make this better? What are our goals? You have to have communication. You can't just think everybody's okay because people are, I mean, literally losing their minds and nobody knows about it. And I'm like, well, God, what happened? And I always tell people, that's one of the things that made me come up with Father Conversations because I was like, we probably need to have some conversations online because I don't understand how, I know it's a pandemic, that's bad, but how does it lead you to kill yourself in your home? It's not like you're in this, on the street, you're homeless, you're homes, great big homes, fancy homes, lots of kids, lots of parents, oh, killing themselves because they're depressed. And I'm like, something else is going on. And that's why it's important for us to have conversations. Have the father conversation. Conversations that boost up the favor of God in your life. Conversations that lead you to do everything God has called you to. Conversations that empower you, that build you up. These are the things we got to have in our families. But we can't be running around having all trying to figure out, first of all, what, if, what the family is. I mean, some people are confused about what the family is. I'm like, why? God told you, don't get confused. And now for us, and for when you're in the family, now we can build each other up, build. That's what it's for. I love being around my family. I mean, we have our bickerings, we have our, we have our discussions, we have, we have uh, uh, where we, we don't, we have debates where we debate different topics and things. But I love the fact that I can even have those kind of conversations with my family members. Some people don't even have people to have conversations with. Far more for them to have debates and discussions and sometimes heated discussions. But that's what it is in the family. You get better by dealing with each other and learning from each other and building each other up and celebrating. And after all that, then you get to celebrate with each other and the wonderful things happen. We have to stick to being strong, united families. And most importantly, against the devil. Forget people, people are gonna do things to you but recognize who is leading people to do what they do to you. And it's always the devil. So if you fight the devil, you won't be able to, you won't even have time to fight people. I tell people, I won't even have time to get into crazy with people because I am so busy fighting the devil and making sure he does not take over my life. He does not control my mind, he does not control my family. He does not control what God is, keep me from what God has given me. That I don't have time to worry about people. And sometimes like, I, I, you wanna fast, no let everybody's the same. You want to give a person a piece of your mind, and but you're like, mm -mm, that's going to distract me from the purpose. It's going to distract me from the real enemy. And while I'm fussing with that person, the devil's running all kind of rashad around me because I'm focusing on the wrong thing and the wrong person and the wrong enemy. The devil is your enemy. Stay united. Develop ways to, to, to build a unity. Have game. I like when they have the the game nights and you do different games and you come together and play the monopolies and the scrabbles and all that good stuff. Find ways to, to, to build the unity and to keep the unity with your kids, with your spouses. Find ways to build it. That's when we keep our empowerment as a family. Next, strong training. Train your kids when we were talking about that. First of all, skills, financial skills, physical skills, people skills. Now, for me, that's a little, I have people skills, but to a point. Then now, like my dad has more people skills. My brother, I have an aunt, she's very good with people. And I have a lot of people skills, but not like them. Some people have just, just they just have it in them. They're just people, people. And that's a wonderful thing. But for some who are not, you have to help them a little better. There's some kids who are more introverted. There's some kids who are a little more shy. You need to work with them so they can interact with people better. Do the things you need to know, you need to take note of in your children. Because some kids, I mean, I was shy, but I was, I'm still able to deal with people and mingle with people. I have confidence enough to deal. Some people are not just shy. It is painfully shy. It's to the point of they get so scared to be around people. They get anxious. They, 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 they can, and that's the people that get depressed and can kill themselves because any little thing offends them and they're ready to, to I mean, it's just something else. 
you find your kid hanging themselves in their bedrooms, all these different things are going on. And some parents are not able to deal with it, but that's how you understand what is going on with your kid. And in those times, you can help build people skills, bring friends, or bring friends around them that they can help interact with, help them interact with their brothers and sisters, but just do things that can bring the best out of the kids. So they're not going out there into a world and facing it and crumbling in the face of the adversity because it's not going to be pretty out there. But building them up in their self-esteem and telling them who they are and showing them who God says they are and all these different things can build them up to be strong individuals because people who are shy are not weak people. They're usually very strong. You self-motivate like myself. You can self-motivate yourself. You can work. These are people who can work online and all these different things and not feel any, any type of way because, but they're strong from within. But now you have to help them know how to talk to release all that to other people, with other people, intermingle with people and bring out the best in other people and other have other people bring out the best in them and how to pick the right friends and how to pick the right situations. These are things you have to build and you can take the time to build those skills in your kids because these are important. These are important skills, even to this day as an adult. There are decisions you have to make and you have to be able to pick up who's the right person to be a business partner with. If you go on the job, who's the right person you should talk to? They can, figuring out who's for you, who's not for you, who's the right influence, who's not the right influence. So when you're in the home and you train them in all these different moral codes and all these different things that God says about them, then they can pick right. Because sometimes it's very hard to. There's a lot of deception in the world. There's a lot of people out there acting one way and they're not. And you have to train your kids to be able to discern that. That's why you train them to know God. You train them to love God and his word. So God can in turn boost them up and give them insight and wisdom and discernment. You have to train the kids. Train them in the right thinking. How do they think about situations? Tell them you have the mind of Christ. Show them how Christ uh, thought, how he handled situations, how he handled his persecutors, how he handled his disciples, how he handled his friends, how he dealt with his mom and his, and his, and his uh, family members. All these things are things you got to teach the children because they're not just need them as kids. They're going to need them even more as adults. Because adults, we deal with a lot of things. That's why I told when I was a kid, I wasn't trying to be an adult too quick. It's like, you know what? I have 19 years to be a teenager. And I was very upset when I turned 20 because I was like, oh my God, I have to face this adulthood for the rest of, but you have 19 years as a teenager and the rest of your life till God knows when to be an adult and handle all the bills and the problems and everything. So I always tell kids, don't rush to be an adult because you have a lot more years as an adult than as a child. And believe me, the responsibility is enormous. So take your time, learn what you need to learn because you're going to get there in time. And that's what you have to do with your kids. They have to have the right thinking, who they are, understand who they are, have a good identity. So when people come to them with all kinds of mess, you got to do this. Here. No, I don't. And you have to be able to tell, because a lot of people want to tell you what you should and shouldn't do. No, God did not tell me that. And you have to be bold in telling that because a lot of people will try to make you be what you're not. So you can fit into their mold and fit into what they want you to do. Tell them, no, I'm empowered to be good. I'm empowered to do differently. I'm empowered to be a success. Even now with the internet, the kids are being bullied left, right, and center all over the internet. If they find out something about you, they post it on the internet for the whole school to see. And then people are shamed into, in, into uh, uh, committing suicide and depression and all kind of crazy stuff. And I'm like, oh my God, we had bullies when I was, co I was coming up. But we didn't have the internet where it could go worldwide in two seconds. That's a whole different ball game. So that's why you have to train your kids to be strong, strong in their minds, knowing who they are in, in spite of what people do to them. Because look at what happened to Jesus. He was God. God in the flesh. And the whole world were coming against him. And it wasn't like heathens. Because look at, look, at, look at Pilate as a Roman. He saw the good in Jesus and didn't want to kill Jesus. But who wanted to kill Jesus? His own Jews. The people he came to save wanted to kill him. And Pilate said, I find no fault in him, but since you all want him and I want, I, I want to be for the people and the majority counts, I'll just let you all kill him. Can you imagine? The Jews were like the, should be like the Christians and they wanted to kill him more than the heathens. And that happens today in our world. 
Churches are going through this every time, every day. If he didn't have the right mindset, if he didn't know who he was and what God had called him to do, he could have gotten depressed and he probably got a little depressed. He could have, excuse me, been suicidal. He could have done a lot of things, but no, he was focused on the mission. He knew who he was. And in spite of what was done to him, the most gruesome uh, 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 punishment was crucifixion. And that's what they wanted to do him. And he was perfect. He didn't sin. Like most of us, we've done a little sin because we're not perfect, but he was perfect. No sin. And they crucified him. And I, would, I would hear a lot of people, even myself saying, but God, what are you doing to me? I'm doing all this stuff for you. I am this wonderful person. Why would you let this happen to me? But no, he knew the purpose was to redeem mankind. And he kept his eye on the prize, no matter what they did to him. That's how we have to live this life for God. The devil's going to come at us. People are going to come at you and try to do things to you. But you have to know who you are and be confident in that so that you're not dissuaded. You're not ready to kill yourself. You're not ready to, to, to throw everything in just like Job's wife, kill God. What, what did she say? Curse God and die. No, you are standing firm in your convictions in what God has called you to do. And you refuse to be denied because you believe his word. So during this Christmas season, I know a lot of people, I'm happy. It's my favorite time of the year. But some people, they can't find joy in it because they're, they don't have enough family around or something bad happened to them during Christmas time. Some people get depressed. And I'm like, wait a minute. I don't care. And at one point, I lived by myself when I left my parents when I had my own home. And I told people, let me tell you something. If nobody comes to my house, it's going to be a party. You hear me? I put the tree up. I decorate. I put all the music on. And I cook all the things I like. And I enjoy myself. And if, if I didn't have a family, because thank God I have an awesome family. So I, go to, I went to their, house, their homes. And we had a good feast and all that there. But if I didn't have that, I would be feasting by myself. Because I love the celebration. You put the TV on. You watch all the movies. I mean, Hallmark is a blessing during Christmas time. Hallmark and all the Christmas movies, you have all the food, you have your, your things to eat and you enjoy yourself. Make sure your tree is lit, buy some gifts for yourself and Christmas, and then probably buy a couple of gifts, go give to somebody who's in need. That's it. That's what it's about. Jesus came to give us life and give it to us more abundantly. And we share that with other people. That's enough to be happy. If you don't have anyone around you, make yourself happy. Don't be miserable because either family is far away or everybody's gone or whatever it is. Enjoy the season because he died that you could have the joy that we're supposed to have, that we could have a life, that we could be prosperous, that we could be joyful. Enjoy what he came to give and don't let life tear you down. And I always tell people, I keep saying, I'll say all the again, life happens for you, not to you. And every time I remember that saying, I just have to say it because when you, when, when you think about that and let that marinate in your spirit, it will give you, it will just be a hopeful situation for you all the time. That's what God gave to, came to give you. Hope, peace, joy, love, prosperity, all good things. Understand that and live that out. See yourself as God sees you. See yourself having what God wants you to have. Think like Jesus, for you have the mind of Christ. Strong, wise innovative, understanding, powerful. That's what he's called you to be. And next, strong training and behavior. <laughs> this one, this one friend, we have some friends in Richmond and they're Trinidad and they always said, um, get some behavior. That's one thing they said. I love that. Oh, get some behavior or you have bad behavior. They always say, get some behavior, get some behavior. We have to train our kids to have good behavior because one thing I've noticed, the kids don't have good behavior. There are a lot of disrespectful young children. I'm like, what is going on? Where was the training? And that's what I was saying before. You have to train them not just for your home, but to go out into the real world. They have to be trained to go out there and to be good examples and to be people who can interact with people respectfully so that they can have a good outcome in their life. Because some people want to be disrespectful. They disrespect the police, they disrespect their parents, their teachers any type of authority, and they expect you to be good to them. I'm like, no, that's not how it works. If you depict that, people are going to look at you a certain way, and they're going to treat you a certain way, because you are looked at as being very disrespectful and no behavior, and you're not disciplined. And that's not what makes for a strong, successful human being. 
train your children how to behave, what to do, what not to do, who to say what to, who not to say what to. We, we couldn't grow up and talk to adults any kind of way. As a matter of fact, if two adults were having a conversation and your parent was talking and you came in to be like, excuse me, adults are speaking, I will get to you sooner. Uh, but that was teaching us that you can't interrupt individual uh, um, adults who are speaking. You are, you're a child. You ask, you say, excuse me, can you do this for me, mom? And then I will come to deal with you later. But you don't interrupt adults like you're an adult yourself. And that's something that was taught from day one. So we knew that. Even to this day, <laughs> there's certain, I see a conversation going around, and I'm an adult already. I don't interrupt the conversation. I wait unless it's an emergency. And if I do that, I say first, could you excuse me, please? There's an emergency we have. and But you have to be respectful. These are things you build up in your child. When you build up, build those things up, those foundations in them, they will not depart. It stays with you. Believe me, because I've been an adult for a minute <laughs> and it's with me. And to this day, there are certain things I will not do because of the training I had as a child. Our families are empowered to replenish, to be fruitful, to multiply and subdue the earth and have dominion over the animals and the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth, moveth upon the earth. But we have to build up the foundation in each and every member so that they know they're empowered and they act accordingly and they act empowered. And they're and when, when people see your family, they're like, oh my God, that's a legacy. You know, do you know whose child that is? And, and they, some people can know you by the way you act. I know her, her mother, I know her father. I know that behavior looks like this one or that one. And you want that to be good. That's how you reproduce after your clients. Now, from generation to generation, you have principles and moral codes and healthy marriages and healthy parents and healthy financial uh, situations that's handed down from generation to generation. Empower family, multiplying after their own kind, being fruitful in every way and replenishing the earth. That's what God has called. So during this family time and Thanksgiving, that's why I thought about families. I was like, oh my God, this is time for family and friends. I'm like, oh my God, if we could build up our families, what an awesome thing would be in the earth where every family is being replenished and everyone's not going to have the same amount of money, the same amount of anything. But no matter how little you have, we were, and that's something we were brought up to believe too, uh, uh, good behavior doesn't, look, doesn't necessarily have to come from how much money you have. As a matter of fact, no matter what money you have, you have to have good behavior. And that's one thing they taught. You don't have to be rich to have good behavior. You just have to have good behavior. As a matter of fact, some rich people are the ones with the bad behavior because they're spoiled. You don't have to be rich to be clean and carry yourself decently and dress decently and dress looking good wherever you go. You just have to have the good moral code and know who you are and act accordingly and let your actions speak louder than your words and make sure they're good actions that can affect people, that can impact the earth. And people can walk strong in the earth and your children, your children's children will call you blessed because you built a strong foundation. You built a strong family and you represent God well. And that's where the Bible is sometimes in, in some of the scriptures you see where they have and, and they have a whole lineage of people and this and the names are so long. You're like, oh, my God, I can't even pronounce it. And sometimes you don't want to read it. But it's good to take the time and read it sometimes. And I do that sometimes. And you see the lineage and the linkage from people all the way down. And all that they did and all that they didn't do. Some people, they were bad kings and all their children were bad kings. All their sons were bad kings. Down, down, down from generation to generation. Then you had the good kings and, and they would say they were good like their father and good like their father and good like their father from generation to generation. And it just shows you how God, how we can we we'll procreate after ourselves. We multiply after our own kind. That's why it's important to make sure your kind is good, to make sure your kind is successful and prosperous and strong and godly and righteous. Because when you do that, you're going to multiply after your own kind. And it goes on from generation to generation. Look at Jesus. Jesus came from the lineage of David. I always said, when uh, the other day just hit me. I mean, we read the scripture all these years, but I said, David wasn't a king. David didn't come from a lineage of kings. That, that, you ever think about it? David came from a lineage of shepherds. But because David decided to kill the giant that was coming after the people of God in Goliath, God blessed him and made him king and made his entire lineage after him to be kings. 
So God can change your lineage based on how you stand up for righteousness, how you stand up for him. And because he did that, he got the king's, he got the king's daughter to be his wife. He got all this money and all this power. And in the end became the king, although the king didn't want him to be king, the king's son didn't become king. The Saul's sons had to die, they died because of his evil ways. But David replaced him and his children became king and Jesus came from the lineage of David. I mean, if you think about it, that will tell you, God can do amazing things in your life. He can turn your life around when you decide to live for him and to do what he's called you to do and kill the giants he's called you to kill. When you kill the giants in your life, whatever it is that comes against your family, that comes against your, 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 your heritage, that comes against you as a child of God, that even comes against the children of God, they're not necessarily your family members, but a family's a, a, a part of the family of God. God can change your lineage. He can change the lives for your kids and your children's kids. That even if you're a shepherd, you cannot become a king and have a, 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 a son like Solomon, who was the richest man that ever lived. Because what? You killed a giant and you obeyed God and stood on his promises. And God can make great things come from you, from you and your children's children. Build strong families. Build families on the precepts of God. Build families on the word of God. And watch God do amazing things in your life. And I'm not saying the attacks won't come because David had a couple of sons that were, that were crazy. Like Absalom, God had to kill him. He was trying to kill his father. He had to die. There are different things that happened to David. And when, the things that happened to David were because he went to Bathsheba and he turned away from God for a minute. And got caught in a little sin. So that kind of messed him up. But he still enjoyed a lineage of royalty because of what he did for God. And God said, after all what he did, God said, there's David is a man after my own heart. He flopped, but he was a man after God's own heart. And God still blessed him and his children. Make that something for you and your family. God bless my children because of me. I want to do what you've called me to do. Help me to raise these children right. Having to raise a family that will be an enterprise in the earth that's unstoppable. Financially, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, uh, academically, every area, God, every area we want to succeed to bring you glory. That men will look upon us and say, these people belong to God. I want the God they have. I want the God that has preserved them and kept them, no matter what the devil has sent their way. So I, I implore you today to live a life that will show God's greatness in your life. And I implore you that your family, whatever is going on, you all are empowered to do everything God has called you to. No matter what the devil sends your way, you are empowered. Know it and seek God's face so he can show you what he wants to do in you, how he wants, you to, do it, how he wants to do it in you so you could grow and be everything God has called you to be. Oh my God, what an awesome. I enjoyed this. I enjoyed it more than I, I thought I would. They got as I was talking, just God kept showing me all these different things. Thank God for my family. And I just want to take a thank God for my mom, my dad, my brother, my nieces, my nephews, my aunts, cousins, husband, children. I just want to thank God for them because they are part of what God has placed me in. The family God has placed me in to be a legacy in the earth of God's greatness, of his righteousness, of his goodness, of his prosperity and his love and everything. And together, we work to be everything God has called us to be. I just want to thank God for you. I think our time has come to a close. Continue to enjoy God's power and, his and everything he's called you to be. Know you're empowered to do it. Don't be afraid. I've been watching all these little movies and Christmas movies, and a lot of them, they have their different ways of sin, but it's all about anything's possible. With God, all things are possible. It can be everything God has called you to be. Just seek him, believe him, and stand on his word. That song um, that CC one is that believe for it, believe for it, whatever it is, this Christmas season, God can do it in your life because he is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. Thank you for being with us again. Don't forget to go to favorofagreatgod.com, get on the Empowered Value Forum course, and the Empowered Value Forum course, be your business. Get into our father market, buy our products, give them as gifts, because everything you buy, uh, uh, proceeds of it, goes towards our um, uh, nonprofit, which is Father Reach, where we want to Im impact all the human trafficking victims we can. All the young people who are not able to take care of themselves, 
by for whatever reason, whatever debilitating, debilitating circumstance has kept them bound, kept them from being everything God has called them to be. We want to do things that will build them up and lift them up. So continue to support us. If you go on the website, you're going to see the QR code right there. It's the simplest way to do it. And you scan it with your phone or your QR code app, and you'll go straight to our donation page. If you don't want to purchase anything, you can just donate to us and donate to what we're doing. And as you, like I we put on there, give the gift of empowered value to someone who may not know they have it. And we can help them be everything God has called us to be. We want to thank you for being with us. We want to thank you for being you this season. You are important. You are valued. Understand your value and celebrate yourself. Celebrate your family. Celebrate people. Give to someone. If, you, if there's one thing that can get you in the spirit of Christmas is giving. Even if you can't give a an expensive gift, give something to someone, give something to your, your neighbor or your, your mailman or whatever it is, just give and be a blessing and watch God be a blessing in your life. We want to thank you for being with us, continue to live the empowered life and continue to have father conversations until we see you again. Bye-bye. God bless. Mm -hmm.